Jared Poland Fronos Photo.com, and I am back with another rapid fire critique brought to you by me because I want to be brought to you by me. And uh, less sponsors means less sponsors because it's more fun to just be brought to you by me because that's what I want to do. It's easier, it's more fun that way, and it's less annoying. Uh, anyway, photo submissions for Rapid Fire Critique. Submit photos, Rapid Fire Critique, boom, put the information right in there, and then you're off and running. Don't forget to sign up for the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide. Well, not the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide, but if you sign up for my email list, you will get a guide to capturing motion in low-light situations sent to your box, as well as a 60-minute long flash photography video that I did with Adam Lerner. Don't forget about Fronos Photo Beginner blah, 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 blah. The beginner bi bide, <laughs> beginner guide. Go above and beyond auto. Check it out. Three hours of video. It's killer. Let's jump into this. By under the hard hat. First things first in this critique. Get rid of this. This. Get rid of this watermark. It kills your image. And I'll just say watermarking 101. Bottom right corner. Out of the way. I mean, nobody's going to... Nobody wants to, st uh, I mean, I can't say nobody, but pl I don't think people want to steal everybody's images. So get rid of those watermarks. Make sure your metadata has the information. And if somebody steals it, so they steal it. I like this image. I like the fact that we got some light up here underneath the framing of the wood. Really nice job. And I like how sharp it is. And I was surprised to look because I was seeing that this was shot with a Canon 7D. I shouldn't have clicked that because that does that now. I got to click on the settings and it says... 1 20th of a second at f10 with a 50 millimeter lens 100 iso why is that interesting on the canon 7d well it's interesting because it's a 20th of a second hand holding that isn't the easiest thing to do especially if somebody decides they want to move they're going to blur the image the f10 is to give you some some play back here because if you shot a 50 1 8 at 1 1.8 then you're not going to get any um you're going to get blurriness in the back, you know, your bokeh in the background, you're not going to get to see what these guys are looking at. I don't think any fill flash was used in it, so you just want to be careful, but F10 gives you this, and I think there was probably some, um, a little bit of dodging and burning, so we would say some burning going on in this, just a little bit to bring it out, but I like the composition, and I like what's going on. Uh, Portrait-wise, white sheet, if you're going to use a white sheet, guys, it's got to be clean. I'm not saying that this is a dirty sheet, I'm just saying, and get rid of that watermark, please. Um, I just, these ripples, they catch the light and they interfere with it. Uh, it's too harsh on her face here. I don't have any eye contact. The hands in the hair, not my favorite thing. But if it's a portrait, we got to be looking at the camera for, for at least something. Uh, not saying that you didn't do that. I just don't feel any connection with this image whatsoever. It's natural light. Nothing wrong with natural light. Just let's get the eye contact. Have her fold her, shoulder, fold her arms over, looking at you like this, squinting the eyes a little bit. Boom. She'll give you some Team America. Moving forward, we got some bird feeder shot. It's a creative crop. Um, a hummingbird, hummingbird feeder. It's cropped. You can see that. You can see that the quality is lost. 1 40th of a second at 5'6". We got to stop doing that at 4,000 ISO. All right. Well, the reason it's 5.6 is because they were zoomed out uh, with the whatever lens was on. I don't think the it will tell me what lens, right? 55 to 250 IS. All right. So we got the 55 to 250 IS. That's the kit lens, a 40th of a second at 5.6, all the way out at 4,000 ISO, pushing the limits of what this camera can handle. Now, guys... I get a lot of crap for talking about lenses and better glass. Nothing wrong with using the 55 to 250. That's what you got. But what, why I'm going to explain this is because I want to, well, I, I beat it to death and I'm going to continue to beat it to death. The reason that I advo ad advocate better lenses when you can afford them and when you can get into it, or even those Sigma lenses, is because instead of shooting at 5.6 at 4000 ISO and again at a 40th of a second the bird's going to uh, your hand motion's going to create even though the IS is there could create some movement that you can't freeze but drop your 4000 ISO even if you shot a 4000 ISO at 2.8 that 40th of a second that you're at you got three stops you're going to go from a 40th to an 80th to 160th 
uh, that's much better. One <laughs> sixtieth handheld. And don't forget, if you're zoomed out to one thirty-five or one ninety-five, the rules state rules that are meant to be broken. You shouldn't be hand holding less than the focal length of the lens. I beat that to death. Moving on. All right. So go straight black and white with this. I like the shot. I like this guy here. I love the work going on, but let's get rid of this color. It's too muted and too distracting in my opinion. A black and white would pop and be a really good on-site location, on-site uh, type of image. Shoes. I really like this. Very nice job hand-holding. Uh, <laughs> photo frame under, and get it, yeah, don't use this font. That's, fonts played out. I like this. I like shots like this. We got the shoes being held by somebody's hands. I don't know the meaning behind all of this, but it's really nice. I like it's go what's going on. It tells a nice story moving forward. This is very nice. I want to see what this is taken at. 125th of a sec. 1 250th. Okay. All right. 1.8. I wanted to say this about that very first shot. If you have some ISO, because the first shot was taken at 100 ISO, plenty of room to bump that up higher to give you a faster shutter speed so you're not hand-holding at a 40th of, or a 20th of a second. I like this a lot, but the focus seems to have missed the eye. Shooting at 1.8 is very difficult. The reason I say that it missed the eye is because the mustache is sharp and intact and in focus. The eye does not, to does not seem to be there. The nose seems to be there, which means the eye isn't there at 1.8. You have such a shallow depth of field that you have to get your focus tack tack on to be right on in this case i think you can shoot at 2 2.5 2.8 even 3.2 and still maintain the out of focus areas of this image and that way you will you can help yourself get more in focus i do like the composition of this shot uh not a lot put in the context here we see that it's bill but what is the context of bill um, we don't know where he is, we don't know what is going on, we don't really see his eye here, so I look for stories in the images to tell me more about Bill, like, if we had a shot of Bill outside, and then a shot of Bill inside, I know I asked for 10 shots to be picked, but I'm just talking about what a story could look like, uh, if Bill was outside working, then you have a portrait of Bill, and then you have more Bill, you know, then you're telling a story, I just not, not enough context in that, well, this gives me context, it's a girl in a bathtub, not much to say about Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. Not much to say. This is more of an artistic feel. Uh, we don't know what's going through her mind. I like the composition. I like the vignetting going on with the lighting. So I like this even without the eye contact because it, there's some context that she's in the bathtub. What is she thinking about? That's for her to decide. Um, I don't get this shot at all. Uh, I'll just, I'm just going to say that. I'm not a fan of this one. And I'm moving on, basically. Wow, a lot of heads down in this. But this, do we see how this has more context, everybody? This has more context. Even though there's no eye contact, we know it's a work site. We can see the work office back here. We can see the, the metal, uh, the steel rebar stuff here. Reinforcing mint stuff. We've got this guy working over here. This is a storytelling image. This is a very good one. I like this one a lot. One of my favorite ones in this rapid fire critique. So nice job. This is Mo. Mao. Anybody know what that reference is to? Mao. Mao. Anyway, nice job. If you'd like to submit your rapid fire critique images, please do so over here on fro knows photo dot clom clom. Click on submit photos. There you have it. Jared Poland fro knows photo dot com. See ya. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click the subscribe button right here below the video as YouTube has made the change. And one more thing, click on subscription updates, manage subscriptions, and if you would like to get an email every time I upload a new video, click this box. If you'd like to see it in your feed on YouTube, click that box. And over on fronosphoto.com, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can go ahead and put your name in this box, your email in this box, hit send it, and I will send you a free photo guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light situations. If you're new to photography or you're somewhere in the intermediate range looking to learn a little bit more about your camera and how to get out of auto, don't forget about the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide, a guide to getting out of auto. It's at a special price right now. It's a three hour long video. You can buy it as an instant download or as a free, as a physical copy with free shipping around the world. So thank you guys very much for watching.